Good morning everyone, today we're talking about why you should put stuff in front of your lens. Finally, we made it. We're downtown Chicago, guys. I couldn't wait to share with you that amazing place. Whether you're into street architecture, portrait, uh, urban, microscopic uh, photography, this place is absolutely amazing. Everyone should come here at least once in their life just to take photos. The architecture is just mind-blowing in this city. Now, today is a very special day for two reasons. Number one, I'm letting go my camera and well I'll explain to you at the end of the episode but just know that I won't have my camera starting from tomorrow which is kind of very sad number two I want to challenge myself and at the same time well I want to share it with you there's something I learned about a few years ago from a great photographer friend and it's about putting a lot of stuff in front of your lens uh, and at first I didn't really understand I mean it's a bit confusing you know you spend a lot of money to get awesome glass and then they're like, yeah, yeah, just put stuff in front of your lens. I'm like, what are you talking about? Well, it's super simple. You know, when you're taking a photo, you always have a subject in mind. You want to ca capture something. You want to share it with the people. Well, by putting stuff in front of your lens, you can actually get to a whole new world of photography. It's like a magical different world that can either help you enhance the subject you're trying to capture or simply add a bunch of different cool effects in your photos. So how does it work exactly? Well, it's pretty simple. You know, when you're taking a photo, what happens is that you're trying to capture a subject and your goal with your camera is to actually frame your subject. Whenever you're going to put stuff in front of your lens, you're going to actually direct the eye of the viewer towards that point that is not covered. Now, you could do that and black it out completely with your hand if you want it, or you can use transparent stuff and a bunch of different like items that I'm gonna show you in a second and get absolutely completely different effects. So, today, the goal is going to go around and take a bunch of awesome shots, street shots, trying to use something in front of the lens. Now, I'm not sure if I'm gonna get the best shots ever because I don't really have my favorite subject with me, Trina is not with me, and which means I'm gonna have to be waiting and get situations to happen, and so this is exactly what we're gonna be doing, and we'll see, depending on the object, how it's gonna look. Hopefully it's gonna be cool, maybe it's not gonna be cool, but hey, that's life. If you don't try anything new, you'll never progress and you'll never discover something awesome to shoot. Here's a good example. There is like actually this train passing by on the middle of the rail. That's why I love Chicago. It's so awesome. It looks like Gotham City. And what happens is that I, I see a lot of distraction on the left side when I'm taking a photo. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to occult the left side. Left, yeah, the left side so that I can see actually only the train pass by with the same angle. Let's see if it works or not. Not sure how that turned out. Let's see when uh, when it's edited. Well, actually, you already seen it. So, but there is something to know, guys. It's not just about using objects that you have in your hand or in your bag or wherever. It's actually also using elements of your background. For example, there is this giant pole right here that I could be using to actually frame myself better. You know, I could be standing here. Or I could use that awesome truck, use the lights, uh, use the the mirrors. There. Is, so many elements in, in every environment that you can be using. Even if it's just a tree or leaf, it's all about framing your subject. It's all about framing your subject. Remember, when you're taking your photo, you really want to be able to capture the story you're trying to tell. And the best way to do that is actually to really show who is part of your story and who is not. So get rid of everyone who's not and focus on who is in your story. Quick note, guys, that's why I love Chicago. Look at that arch, those arches with the train. It's so, so pretty. It's awesome for pictures. It's not because you have a big frame that you have a wide angle that you have to put everything into your shot. Think about it. It's really about what you want to tell, what kind of story you want to tell. And wedding photographers, for example, do a great job at that. For example, their environment sometimes that are very distracting, not very beautiful. And their whole goal is just 
to capture the story of the bride and groom, they're gonna be able to black out the whole elements, either by putting stuff in front of the lens, using very shallow aperture, that's, that's also something, or actually shooting through elements, and that makes a very big difference. There's another photographer that does a great job at that. His name is Colin. Colin, if you're watching, big shout out to you. Your last shot with the guy on the staircase is kind of sick. I really love it. So get inspired, try something different, guys. It's all about trying and framing your subject. So just try, if you don't like it, you don't like it. Another tip is whenever you're putting object in front of your lens, make sure you're shooting at a very wide aperture, meaning very low f-stop because it's gonna make them like very, very blurry. If you don't, it's gonna make them slightly too sharp and then it, it gets just distracting. It removes actually the effect you were going for. Now I promised I would talk about why I'm not gonna have a camera very soon. Let's, let's find another place to talk about it. My arm is cramping right now. So here's what's up. About two, three months ago, I made a video that actually became kind of the first video to get a lot of views on this channel and it was about the drawbacks of the Sony a7R 3 that I'm using and I mentioned in one of them that just after three weeks of usage my microphone external microphone plug started getting weird and I it would not record the second channel anymore or at least the first one doesn't matter one of them is not recording which means I have to turn all my videos into mono when it's recorded in stereo basically what it means is the camera is not doing its job there's a problem maybe in fabrication. I don't know, it appeared after three weeks of usage and I have to turn all my footage into dual mono, which kind of sucks, I have to admit. Now, with that being said, I have to send back the camera to Sony. They're like, yeah, send it back to me. The problem, and you guys might have experienced it, I don't know, but the problem, the real problem for me is that I don't have another camera and when I send it for repair, it's gonna take 10 business days and they're not giving me anything in exchange which means I won't have a camera for 10 days, which really sucks to make those videos and to keep shooting. So I was trying to reach out to Sony, but no one got back to me just to see if they could at least lend me a camera so I could continue to make those YouTube videos while the camera is in repair. So far, no news. So what I, I did and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot a few more videos today and release them over the next two weeks for you guys. Hope you will enjoy them. And there are also a few like updated ones that I'm actually gonna shoot again in Flurn Studio that when I did the how I edit video, that's the studio I was shooting in. Guys, it was a super quick update. That's also one of the reasons I had to go back to the US. I had to get that camera repaired and you know how the warranties work around the world. I could only get that done where I bought the camera in the US. So that's what's happening, but enough with the monologue. I want you to try actually putting stuff in front of your lens, uh, whether it's prism, transparent stuff, dark stuff, your hands, everything, shooting through object, using the background, the elements that you have to frame your subject. Please try it out. Share with me on Instagram the pictures you're taking during that challenge, maybe a hashtag, put stuff in front of your lens. No worries, man. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the the next episode if you like that video remember guys leave it a big thumbs up let me know in the comments if you have any questions if there is anything you would like to see more on this channel i can't wait to hear from you and also a huge huge thank you to all of you who have been here because i think we reach 8k on youtube now it's absolutely amazing 8k on instagram also i'm so pumped right now it's not even funny maybe you can't tell it but i'm so excited inside it's crazy so in case you didn't know, there is this S-U-B-S-C-R-A, I'm never gonna get it right, button that's called subscribe. You can hit it and hit the notification bell, otherwise you won't know when the video is out. I know it's kind of weird, YouTube is acting kind of weird lately, so make sure you do that and I will see you in the next episode, guys. Get out there, get some awesome shots. See you, bye. Hashtag put, uh, hashtag put stuff uh, Maybe hashtag put stuff in front of your lens. Way oh, too hard to say. Hashtag put stuff in your lens. Uh. Hashtag cows in front of your lens. I don't know.